it's been an interesting few years for the Indianapolis Colts. You know, it's been a quarterback carousel, as you like to say. Um, that's because, you know, ever since Andrew Luck retired in 2019, yeah, it's pretty much been a cycle, a cycle of quarterbacks. You know, you had Jacoby Brissett playing <laughs> the last minute for Andrew Luck in 2019. Then 2020 brought in Philip Rivers in pretty much his final stop before retirement. And then in the offseason last year, they pretty much went out and got Carson Wentz for pretty much what ultimately ended up being <laughs> giving away a first round pick. Yeah. Yikes. So they they did, I guess Frank Reich and Chris Ballard did an okay job in building up the roster, netting defensive stalwarts like DeForest Buckner, extending Darius Leonard, and then you go out in the second round, get Jonathan Taylor and Michael Pittman, and it would end up being really, really good pieces for the offense. But then, obviously, the biggest key piece missing is the quarterback. And, you know, seemingly adding Carson Wentz to the mix seemed like the final consistent piece to the puzzle for a team. Had a rising running back in Jonathan Taylor, a good beast in uh, Michael Pittman, and a very strong defense. So, going to the season, there seemed to be some promise for the Indianapolis Colts. But, clearly not. They started 0-3, mainly because of the struggles Carson Wentz had. Um, he didn't provide many turnovers as he later did, and especially during his Philly days. But, Carson Wentz was pretty reckless with the damn ball. It's like, he didn't want to get sacked. He only wanted to extend the play. But then when he tried to expand, ex extend the play, he nearly he either nearly threw an interception or he did throw an interception. Um, he would also often lapse under under pressure and, again, rashly throw it away um, when his receivers were well defended. So Carson Wentz pre played pretty erratic football for much of the season. The Colts, throughout the season after that, managed to float around a winning percentage for much of the season. Um, the defensive front that had Buckner and Leonard, big anchor for the Colts defense. And rookie Quiddy Pay, pretty good year. Four sacks, several tackles, um, good, reliable pass rusher next to DeForest Buckner. On the offensive, offensive side of the ball, Jonathan Taylor, beast, a beast. Clear MVP of the team, nearly won the MVP. Uh, obviously, you know who that went to, but he unleashed havoc on opposing defenses. Just look at his week 11 game against the Buffalo Bills, single-handedly tearing them down. So, Michael Pittman Jr. also stepped up big in the top receiver role uh, over T.Y. Hilton. But, you know, for as hot as the Colts were during um, this stretch, you know, going um, to the late stretch run of the season, still several flaws. Still several flaws that would rear its ugly head um, down the final stretch of the season. You know, Carson Wentz, relatively inconsistent in most games, resulting in Frank Reich having to rely heavily on Jonathan Taylor and back up Naeem Hines um, in big critical games, especially in the games like against the New England Patriots and that game against the Buffalo Bills. And then the game against... Even the Houston Texans, god damn it. Even <laughs> the Houston Texans. So he did for Carson Wentz, he do he would do well um all game long in some, but then in others, he would play well in one half, but then in the other in in the second half, he would suck. He would suck in, or it would be the other way around. So yeah, not, it was not a good year for Carson Wentz. Um the offensive line was also not as strong as it has been been in is as it been in years past um left tackle eric fisher you know not a good year for him so the, the secondary also not a good year um outside of corner rocky sin giving up some easily preventable plays um by the time the colts um were near the end of the season they were in a position to clinch one of the last uh the last playoff spots in the afc um and they were playing some solid football you know despite you know putting the john to taylor show john to taylor was pretty much doing everything for the indianapolis colts by this point um, they had actually had two opportunities to clinch that last playoff spot by season's end, but the same problems that I just described led to their downfall. Um, they lost to the Raiders, um, in week, in week 17, I mean, the Raiders played their hearts out, um, for Rich Passaccia by that point. And then there was the season finale in week 18, like nowhere near understandable from, in, in contrast to th that that lost to the, the Las Vegas Raiders. I mean, sure. They played a much more, they lost to a much more motivated team in the Las Vegas Raiders. Okay. They, they were also a playoff team eventually. 
But then, <laughs> then you go down to Indianapolis. Oh, uh, not Indianapolis, Jacksonville. All you have to do is beat the low life, the clown fan base, go down to the land of all elite wrestling, who is heralded by the Cucks of Suck and Tony Khan Man. All they had to do was beat the all elite Jacksonville Jaguars. And in a sea of clown fans, they played flat. They came out lifeless. Jonathan Taylor, nowhere to be seen. And Carson Wentz didn't give a damn. Frank Reich got outcoached. Everybody got outplayed by Trevor Lawrence and the interim head coach, Daryl Bevel. Pretty much everyone on the Colts, where are the Colts on the milk carton? So pretty much they got boat raced by a team on its way to the number one pick in the draft for the second straight year. Embarrassing shit right there. So that they pretty much crashed and burned <laughs> in 2021. Nine and eight, disappointing. Very disappointing nine and eight. And you know, it, it's a roster that seems well balanced. Um, yeah, a bad QB undid pretty much all that. And pretty much um bad coaching too. Bad coaching do. This, this 2021 was a total bust for the Indianapolis Colts. They relied way too much on Jonathan Taylor um, for much of the season. And look where where it got them. Look where it got them. So during the during this early portion of the offseason, well, they got I guess they got their rid of their perceived problem in Carson Wentz. They sent Carson Wentz packing to the Washington Commanders for multiple second and third round picks. Now, here's the thing. They need a quarterback. Like, who who are they going to get a quarterback? There's not many options left. So, who are they going to get? Now, they did get rid of Carson Wentz's large-ass contract, but wh- wh- where's the answer to quarterback? Where is that? So, now going to the offseason, you know, they have the most cap space in the NFL. They have around 70, $70 million thanks to, you know, getting rid of Carson Wentz. So, they have some key free agents that need to, um, hopefully they need to resign like Xavier Rhodes, Eric Fisher, um, Michael Badgley, a bunch of free agents that they have to consider. Um, but are they going to spend all that money? We'll see. So they're currently positioned to draft 42nd because, well, the, the that conditional second round pick from that they gave to the Eagles turned into a first round pick. Yeah, because Carson Wentz played a good chunk amount of 2021. So, obviously, their number one need is quarterback and hopefully a long-term quarterback. And, yeah, we all know the Wentz experience was a total disaster. But now, it's time for Indy to pick a quarterback. Time for Indy to decide what what they need to, uh, to get out of the quarterback market. And they don't have that many options left. They have, But they have to decide quickly. They have to either pick out what the, whatever's left of the wasteland of the free agent quarterback market, whether it's Marcus Mariota or Mitch Trubisky or go out and trade someone like Jimmy Garoppolo. They have to pick something. And well, it, it, it still remains to be seen. If it's like a long-term option for them, which might have been literally not, but either way, they, ha- they have to get a bridge option until the Colts could settle for a long-term option, which who knows when that will be. They got to get some help from Michael Pittman now, they may not be able to get some in free agency, but again, just like with other teams, they they have plen- they have plenty of options in the draft. They're going to need a number two receiver opposite of Pittman in order to get a- attention away from Pittman against opposing defenses. Now, the one of their biggest weaknesses as well in 2021 was the secondary. Um, for the secondary, yeah, it, it was pretty spotty at best. Corners like Xavier Rhodes um, wasn't particularly good. It wasn't particularly good, um, and most of the safeties ended up on IR. So names like Stephon Gilmore and J.C. Jackson and Carlton Davis should be on the Colts' radar um, in the free agency market coming soon. So even if they don't get anyone on the free agent market, play of names in the draft as well. So the Colts, the Colts, it seemed like their problems were solved for twenty for twenty twenty one when they traded for Carson Wentz. But man, it, throughout the season, even more problems were created. Even more problems were created. Wentz's continued erratic play that plagued him in Philadelphia um, after the ACL tear, and 
of course, Frank Reich's continued reliance on Jonathan Taylor, it ruined Indy's perhaps golden playoff chances. They literally had, it, like, I'm not saying that Indy could have made the, like, let's say the divisional playoffs had they had they gone that had they gone to the playoffs but for indianapolis they relied too heavily on jonathan taylor and you know they i don't i'm not saying that they didn't give carson wins a chance but damn too much jonathan taylor that's all i'm trying to say so the colts want to present another disastrous disappointment in 2022 they have to find their quarterback asap otherwise what the hell are you doing? You're just wasting time and you're also wasting money.